look, the question that I have for you, I th I, th I think it's a very unremarkable, uh, non-controversial question. Okay. Uh, but it is something that is part of the debate at the moment with multiculturalism and with Muslim, the Muslim community yeah. and with Islam. Okay. I'm glad you mentioned the Muslim community because, yes, yes I, I just was at an iftar dinner last night and we, we spoke at length about the perception of the community. Um, yes. And so, anyway, keep yes. going with your anyway. question. Okay. We live in a free society. Yes. Yeah. Everybody is equal, right? Is equal, has yep. equal rights, and everyone is equally protected by the law. Mm -hmm. There are Muslim women who wear various headdresses. Mm hmm. And there's the, what are they? There's the, um, what's the long, the, the, the long the hijab, one? The hijab. There's yeah. the hijab. Yeah. Yeah. And there's the niqab, mm -hmm. which is the all face thing with the thing. And then there's the burqa. Mm -hmm. So you've got the burqa, which is the, the cover all. Yeah. And you've got the niqab, which is kind of the, the Ned Kelly pillbox yeah. kind of eye slit yeah. thing. Okay. As Victoria's multicultural commissioner, mm -hmm. Are you satisfied that those women know that they are equal members of this society and that they can take those things off whenever they like and that they can change religion whenever they like, knowing that there are laws that will protect them from anyone who's got any problem with them doing so? Do you believe that those women are fully aware of their rights in this community that they can do what they like in terms of following whatever religion they like. If they, for instance, if, if a woman wearing a burqa yeah. woke up one morning and said, I saw Star Wars last night and you know what? Enough with this Muhammad in the cave stuff. I want to become a Jedi and I want to follow the Jedi faith that she is free to do so. Yeah. Are you satisfied that those women are aware of how free they are legally entitled to be? I'm satisfied that they're aware of how legal they're entitled to be, but I'm not satisfied that they feel free to do what they like, particularly the women who subscribe very closely and identify very closely to that faith, and there is many of them, and they're exactly like you and I. Uh, they've just got a headdress on, you know, so big deal, right? But a lot of those women, and I've had them in the office um, most weeks, I had one in the uh, beautiful, and she's become a great friend. And uh, she was in the office last week and explained to me that there is no way that she could go out in Melbourne after 10 p.m. without feeling incredibly unsafe, and that she, you know what might be inflicted upon her uh, by passers-by or um, from those outside her community. Outside her community, right. just we're talking. She wouldn't be. She wouldn't come into the city. Is how she said to. Is mm. how she described it to me. And she said also her son. You know, says mum. You know. Um, I, I was at school today and uh, we were talking about, you know, they were talking about Muslims and like apparently we're suicide bombers. And, mm. you know, so so this sort of stuff, that kind of narrative is even yes. getting into, um, you know, members of her family uh, or affecting mm. members of her family. And she, she was in tears and has been in tears actually uh, several times over the course of this, um, you know, mm. uh, over the last six or so months. And there's been a lot of examples like hers. So... I think we've got a long way to go as a society before we um, before we really instill that sense mm -hmm. of belonging, the equal right for everyone to belong. Are they aware? Yes, they are mm -hmm. aware. Are aware. Uh, are, do they feel safe? No, I think that there's still a, um, a gap there mm -hmm. to bridge. You mentioned there an example of, of her feeling unsafe outside the community. That's true. What about the issue of Within inside the community? the community? She tells her husband... Honey, the whole Muhammad thing's not working for me. I'm taking this thing off. Yeah, I'm that's gonna, a good question. I'm, 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 I'm going to follow Jedi. Not, it now, plays out differently. As you know, it would play out really differently. It depends really on, on the archetype of the man that she's married to, for example. So there might be someone there that she's, you know, that has, um, you know, um, a closer attachment to, to his, to, I guess, parts of the faith or those parts of the faith. But the thing is with the Muslim community, like you see, it, it's so many different grades of it and so many different culture, yes. cultures that are attached to this too. So you just can't, like, it's, it's interesting that Westerners, we always say, oh, you know, um, or, or like when I'm, you know, like journalists, for example, um, 
you know, from mostly Western publications might say, oh, we need a collective voice. Well, how do you have a collective voice, you know, when you have so many different countries and so many, um, yeah, different oh, religiosities attached yeah. to it? I would love to talk to you for the next hour on this issue. Okay. Obviously, we're not going to. Yeah. I'll ask you just one more question yeah. on this. Rephrasing it, I guess, do the men in the Muslim community, do you think, so are you satisfied that, all men in the Muslim community recognise and respect the right of women yes. to act as free mm. agents and to choose whatever religion they want to follow, even if it means being an apostate yeah. and rejecting, rejecting uh, Islam. That's a hard question to answer. I think yes, many probably do, and and some don't. It's like a, it's it's like people mm. from our faith. I mean, so you can't really apportion. Um, I guess it, you know uh, we can't say oh yes, section of the community does and some don't. You'll have examples of those that do and don't, and uh, you see it. I mean, like I, I said, I was at an iftar dinner last night, and uh, you know there are some people that observe um, the fasting rituals around Ramadan more closely than others, but does that make them less Muslim? No. Um, it's like us with Greek Orthodox, for example. And so there is, and as I say, there's some people you can't hug during that time that are really, you know, mm. um, obviously like really wedded to those aspects of the faith. And so I think that's a difficult question to answer, but I think the awareness is there. And I think one would hope that the kind of collectivism, I think at the moment, the Muslim community is being more united than ever. And that's why these Ramadan and these iftar dinners um, celebrating um uh, or my observing Ramadan are so important because it's the, apparently Melbourne led the way with this too. Mm. So eight or nine years ago, you know, opening it up to a multi-faith community. Yeah. That's huge. And, I think the Ambos yeah. did it for the first time this year in Melbourne. Mm. So and, go Melbourne. And the rise of moderate Muslims or the, the increased focus on the huge, overwhelming number of moderate Muslims who are not, who don't play into the stereotype, into the Islamophobic stereotype yeah. of what Muslim people are. These people are, are voices that we need to hear more. Well, they're of. helping push through, I Absolutely. think, because we're, you know, typical us, we have an affinity bias. So if they look like us and sound like us, then we're going to mm. listen to them more. Yeah. Which is a bit of, it's there's a bit of shame around that too, 